Hi, I'm Cannabis Ken, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be telling a stoner story about my first run-in with the cops while baked. But let's take a hit first. Press some nice rosin. Nice little glob on there. I just cleaned out the world's worst dab rig. Let's see if I can get the second go today. Fucking clogged up on me earlier. I'm days away from getting a new rig. Sick of this one. Sick of dealing with it. I'm sick of it. Anyways, cheers. There's a little redemption on the combo hit. Yeah. So tasty. So, my first run in with the cops while baked. I was in college, it's me, my roommate, and this kid that lived in the same dorm as us, and my roommate and the other kid had split a quarter of some northern lights, and this was when, like, the strain originally came out, it was, like, one of the first, like, you know, White Widow or northern lights, or, like, I think it was one of the first strains I ever heard of, you know, and, uh, so we smoked this shit, and, like, my roommate had this beautiful Sherlock, just beautiful freaking glass Sherlock, and he had stolen it at the Woodstock 99, and freaking this piece was just so beautiful. So we're driving around in Nashua, which is up in New Hampshire. And we're driving around and we're on these back roads. I mean, they're two lane roads, but only one car can go down it. If like two cars come, you gotta like go off the road, like so each other can pass. And so you know, we're driving around these back roads, no one around, and we see one cop. Okay. Uh, trying to, you know, start heading home anyways. And all of a sudden we see another cop car. I don't know if it was another cop car or the same cop car. But, like, alright, that's a little weird. And all of a sudden we're driving, driving, driving. And there's a freaking cop car parked up there and it pulls out after us. Fuck. So people start stashing things under seats or whatever. And lo and behold, partner goes up to the passenger side, and the other cop goes up to the driver's side. I'm sitting in the back seat, baked off my butt. Hold on a second, I need a hit. Cheers. Anyway, <laughs> so they're at both windows, and so the cop at the driver's window starts asking reg license registration, asking questions, and so 
the kid in the passenger seat has to go in the gold box and hand over the registration. And the cop's like in the passenger window looking in with his flashlight. All of a sudden he opens up the door and he's like, what's this? And he grabs from under the seat, friggin' my roommate Sherlock. Peace. And so he's like, all right, where's the weed? Uh, other car. Where's the weed? Just tell us where it is. We know you have it. And so again, eventually the kid gives up the weed. And so they're like, you sit here. And so they get us all out of the car and, you know, stand us on the back of the <laughs> my buddy's car, which is, by the way, uh, like, 1988 Oldsmobile Delta 88, which is like a huge land yacht. So we all lined up against the trunk, and he goes, Tonight's your lucky night. Because my partner did not ask permission to open that door, he just did. That is considered an illegal search and seizure. So you're going to be going home tonight. I'm like, thank God. He's like, whether or not you're walking or driving depends on passing a field sobriety test. And they made us dump out the weed and they smashed the Sherlock. That was bad. That was such a beautiful piece. So like I think he said that they were asking like two hundred dollars for it or something, but like I said, he stole it. I don't even remember my roommate's name. Tom maybe. I think it was Tom. <laughs> Anyways, um, so he gives my roommate Tom the field sobriety test. He fails. So, why he's taking the field sobriety test, me and the other kid are standing there with the other cop. I go, excuse me, sir. I'm like the highest I've ever been in my life. What happens if none of us pass this field sobriety test? He goes, well, the car goes on a tow truck and you guys walk back to UMass Hall. <laughs> So, I'm all nervous. My roommate then fails the field sobriety test. So I'm like, fuck. And I look over at the other kid. He's nervous as shit. They had smoked before they even got me. So they're even higher than I am. And so they give me the field sobriety test. I pass with flying colors. Highest I've ever been. I told the cop that was the highest I've ever been in my life. And I pass it with flying colors. So they're like, all right, ship is yours. I go, oh, I've never driven this car before. It's huge. You can see that. He's like, yep. I go, also, the front end is out of alignment. So it pulls to the right. So if I'm swerving a little bit, it's not me. It's the car just pulling to the right, you know. And he goes, if you swerve at all, I am repulling you over, and we'll go through all this again. I'm like, wait a second. Like, uh, okay, he was, you know, like, I figured, uh, you know, like, he could get me for driving under the influence, but he'd give me a field sobriety test again, and I'd pass it again, so I wasn't too worried. <laughs> but I drove that car straight as an arrow, got home. And we got out of it because the cop illegally, well, wrongfully opened the door without asking. And these cops were actually honest, so congrats to them. You know, there are a lot of good cops out there. There's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of shitty people out there, and there's a lot of shitty cops out there. A lot of shitty people in any profession. Anyways... Have a good day.